everyone take a deep breath. In and out. 70% of that oxygen just came from the ocean. The average adult breathes 12 to 20 times per minute, which adds up to about 30,000 breaths per day. If we multiply this by the current population, that equals about 228 trillion breaths per day. Where does all this oxygen come from? Most people would automatically respond trees, right? Trees and green plants undergo photosynthesis, which provides oxygen for us to breathe, right? Well, kind of. Would you be surprised to learn that the majority of the oxygen we breathe every day actually comes from the ocean? Out of those 228 trillion breaths, 70% of them are supplied by the plants and animals of the ocean, like seagrasses and phytoplankton. When I first learned this, I was astounded. We are all taught that trees, trees are what let us breathe. But in reality, trees can't provide the amount of oxygen we need. The ocean does. And all you hear about the ocean is how much we're polluting it. Back when I was in third grade, I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist. Now, I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew it had something to do with dolphins. And boy, did I love dolphins. As I grew older, I began to watch documentaries about the ocean. And all of them talked about the amazing, incredible creatures and ecosystems of the ocean, as well as a more surprising concept for a sixth grader. Ocean pollution. Each and every one of these documentaries talked about how pollution is destroying our oceans. I was horrified. I said, this is so unfair. By the time I grew up old enough to become a marine biologist, there won't be any ocean left for me to study. I made this realization back when I was 12 years old. That was five years ago. In those five years, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch has grown to be three times the size of France, weighing over 80,000 tons. It used to be the only one of its kind in existence, but now there are five huge islands of floating trash collecting in the gyres of each ocean where currents collide and covering 40% of ocean surfaces. Enough plastic is used every year to circle the Earth four times, most of which ends up in these floating trash islands. According to the World Economic Forum, 32% of all plastic used annually ends up in these floating trash islands. It's equal to a full dump truck of plastic going into our oceans every minute. <coughs> but why should you care? Well, besides giving you oxygen to breathe, the ocean drives weather patterns and regulates temperatures. Water's high heat capacity allows it to heat up and cool down much slower than the more rapid transitions of land, so it balances them. The global circulation of currents also carries warm and cold water around the globe, influencing climates. It also gives structure and stability to our worldwide food web. When you put a piece of plastic into the ocean, it breaks into tiny pieces that are eaten by fish. And when we eat those fish, we're ingesting that same plastic that we put into the ocean. Now, this situation may seem horrible. It may even be irreversible, but it's not hopeless. Every day, brilliant young inve inventors are coming up with brand new ideas for ocean cleanup. For example, 24-year-old Boyan Slat of Norway proposed the Ocean Cleanup System, which is a U-shaped device that goes out to these floating trash islands, collects trash, and then sends it back to land for proper disposal techniques. It's still in the early stages of testing, but it holds promise for a cleaner future environment. Although it can't keep up with how much plastic we're putting into our oceans every day. Single-use plastics are a huge offender in ocean pollution. The average American uses 185 pounds of plastic every year. That's the weight of a grown man. The average family uses 1,500 plastic bags. All this plastic takes over 500 years to decompose. 500 years. Now, most people think that one person can't do anything to help. But one individual can make a true difference by doing three simple things. One, 
spread the word, and become an advocate for our oceans. A lot of people don't even know about ocean pollution, and, and by simply telling them, you can inspire change. Write letters to your local and state governments telling them that this is something we, the citizens, care about. Use that breath the ocean gives you and talk about it. Two, volunteer to clean up local environments. We live right next to the Mississippi, which takes all of our trash and just whooshes it right on down into the ocean. Local projects like Living Lands and Waters River Cleanup Project have dedicated themselves to cleaning our local environments. So get involved. By picking up one piece of plastic, you can save the life of a fish, a turtle, or even a dolphin. And you're sparing those floating trash islands from one more piece of plastic. Finally, reduce your own individual waste. Instead of using single-use plastics, use reusable bags, water bottles, even straws. By reducing your own 185 pounds, you are making a difference. The state of California has been a leader in the fight against ocean pollution, passing a new law where restaurant patrons have to specifically ask for a straw in order to be given one. I hope other states are soon to follow. Next time you take a deep breath, think about what the ocean does for you every day. It provides oxygen, food, temperature regulation, weather patterns. So instead of constantly harming it by producing endless waste, we can all together make a difference. By 2050, it's predicted that there will be more plastic waste in our oceans than fish. Only we can change that. Join me in saving our seas by becoming an advocate and speaking out for our oceans, by volunteering to clean up local environments, and by making small changes to your day-to-day -day activities to reduce waste. I'd like us all to take one more deep breath, in and out. Thank you.